We want to begin with President Bush's surprise overseas trip where he was forced to dodge two flying shoes. NBC's John Yang standing by at the White House with more on this. John, this had to be a rather embarrassing moment. Embarrassing and a little odd, Matt. Yeah, the president is in the air right now flying back from Afghanistan where he uh, spoke to U.S. troops and went with Afghan President Hamid Karzai. But everyone is still buzzing about his earlier visit to Iraq when he got a rather graphic demonstration of what some Iraqis think of him and the U.S. presence. President Bush and the Iraqi Prime Minister were about to take reporters' questions when an Iraqi television reporter hurled a shoe. A grave insult in Arab culture, a gesture of deep contempt. He shouted in Arabic, this is a gift from the Iraqis. This is a farewell kiss, you dog. Then as he threw the other shoe, this is from the widows, the orphans, and those who were killed in Iraq. He was dragged from... NBC News producer Hazi Balkiz was sitting near the reporter. Everybody was so shocked. I believe even the Secret Service was a bit slower to react than you'd expect because it was so shocking. He had time to pick up his second shoe and throw it. The White House press secretary, Dana Perino, was hit in the face with a microphone as security wrestled with the reporter. The president wasn't hurt and seemed amused. It's a size 10 shoe that he threw. Iraqi reporters apologized to Mr. Bush, who called it a sign of Iraq's growing freedom. It is one way to gain attention. Uh, it's, it's like going to a political rally and having people yell at you. It's like driving down the street and have people not gesturing with all five fingers. Later, he reflected on the moment. I, I frankly, it's, it's, I didn't view it as that. You know, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was weird. I thought it was unusual to have a guy throw a shoe at you. But um, I don't, uh, I'm not insulted. Before leaving Iraq, Mr. Bush rallied U.S. troops. Thanks to you, the Iraq we stand in tonight is dramatically freer dramatically safer and dramatically better than the Iraq we found eight years ago. Now, we're likely to hear a lot of presidential jokes about this as he flew from Iraq to Afghanistan last night. He told reporters aboard Air Force One that he really couldn't understand what the guy was saying to him, but he said he did get a look at his soul. Meredith? All right, John Yang, thanks very much. NBC News producer Ghazi Balkiz was sitting just a few feet away from the man who threw the shoes at President Bush. Richard Engel is NBC's chief foreign correspondent. Chuck Todd, NBC's political director. And Doris Kearns Goodwin is a presidential historian. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. Start with you. You were in the room when this happened. What did you see? Well, I was sitting, I was sitting in, the, uh, in the news conference, and the uh, Iraqi journalist was sitting a few seats next to me. And as you expect in every press conference, you know, the, the photographers were taking photographs, the journalists were taking notes, the camera were doing their, their camera work, and all of a sudden, this guy picks up a shoe and throws it at the president and starts shouting in Arabic, uh, this is a, a farewell kiss, goodbye, you uh, killer of Iraqi people. And then he throws the second one. And I think for those seconds between the first shoe and the second shoe being thrown, Everybody was in complete shock, and oh, it was it was surreal. It was uh, so bizarre. And then after that, the uh, Secret Service and the Iraqi uh, security personnel jumped on him and subdued him and pulled him away while he was struggling and and shouting. And then it took a while for the pressure to calm down. And President Bush actually stood up and said, told everybody to calm down and sit down. And and that was that. But it was still shocking and, and very surreal. Did the other journalists there um, were embarrassed by this? They were actually embarrassed. They went up to the president and they apologized to him, telling him that this does not represent the, uh, the Iraqi media, Iraqi journalists, or, or with that said, Iraqi hospitality. They consider what happened to, to the president as an insult to them because this is not Arabic hospitality. And Ghazi, before I let you go, do you have any idea um, what will happen to him? I know his employer is calling for his immediate release. Well, what happened is, uh, during the old days and during Saddam's days, any insult towards the president or president's guests used to be, used to be punished by death. After the collapse of the regime, the, the old regime, what happened is they still didn't regulate a law to, uh, to, uh, to govern what happens in this kind of situation. So we are told he's being held at the prime minister's office, but we don't know, they don't know what kind of charges they can bring against him because there's no law to regulate that. All right, Ghazi, thank you very much. I can bring in Richard right now. What, what do you know about this journalist? Um, 
journalist? He's, yeah. he's a journalist. Okay. Uh, we spoke to his colleagues this morning. He was not scheduled to have been at the press conference. He generally reports on Sadr City, a, a hardline area in eastern Baghdad. It's an area of, of radical Shiite militia groups. And while covering this area over the last several years, he's had relatives killed. This is not completely uncommon, uh, particularly in this part of Baghdad. He himself was kidnapped about a year ago and, according to uh, his cameraman, was held for three days and was tortured during that time. So he, he is someone who has very anti-American opinions, and we were told again this morning he routinely refers to President Bush and Americans as dogs. Uh, and this again this morning, in that same area where he reports, Sadr City, there was a, a protest. A few thousand people got together to support him, and they held up signs saying, uh, no to Israel, President Bush, you terrorist, and they had shoe the end of a stick in, in support of so what he was doing. So there are some people who think what he did was the right thing Particularly to do. Particularly this one movement uh, in, in the uh, a radical Shiite bloc from that part of Baghdad, Sadr City, which is a large area. It's about two million people in Baghdad. Chuck, if I can bring you in at this point, um, mm -hmm. he, the president, this is his last visit to Iraq, and obviously he was trying to project a sense of stability there. Right. Does this uh, fly in the face of that, so to speak? Well, it does. Iraq, obviously, is very intertwined in his presidential legacy. He will be judged, if he has a chance at being judged better than he's being judged now by the American people. In our last poll, we had 80 percent, so they wouldn't miss him. But it is going to be an Iraq that has the, gives him the opportunity to someday improve his legacy. It is seen as both his number one failure and his number two success when we asked both the greatest failure and the greatest success. So it is, uh, uh, it is probably not the way he wanted to go out. Um, but uh, and, uh, oof, what, a, what, a, what a rough way. He's already been sort of kicked out of office by the American people. This Doris, is tough. You, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is a tougher way for him, I think, because Iraq's so important to him. Doris, do you see any parallels between the, the last days of George Bush and those of, of presidents who have come before him? Well, you know, it seems that unpopular presidents like Lyndon Johnson and George Bush find a certain comfort in going to army bases and secure regions where they cannot be demonstrated by other people. You know, it's interesting. The one real parallel that comes to my mind, however, is Vice President Nixon went to South America in the late 50s, and he was pelted by demonstrators who actually spit in his face. A tobacco-wielding guy spit a wad of tobacco in his face, and they had signs, Nixon dog. I mean, somehow this dog makes its way over several continents. He stood his ground, and he came out looking a little more popular as a result of seeming courageous. And interestingly, I think Bush is relaxed self-deprecating humor may show that he's anxious to leave the presidency. He has more humor resurfacing now that it's only end, because you're not sure he would have done this two years ago to have been as relaxed about it as he was. Yeah, more, more humor and also tremendous reflexes, that's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Ghazi Balkis, Richard Engel, Good Chuck you. Todd, and Doris Kearns Goodwin, thank you all for your time this morning. President Bush is safely out of Iraq tonight after a surprise farewell visit that may have had one too many surprises. The trip, shrouded in secrecy and tight security, was billed as a chance for the president to thank the troops and celebrate a new security pact with the Iraqi government. But instead, what everyone seems to be talking about tonight is a bizarre and potentially dangerous incident that happened as the president spoke at a Baghdad news conference. NBC's John Yang has the story. On President Bush's farewell visit to Iraq, a grave insult in Arab culture, a sign of deep contempt. Mr. Bush and Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki were about to take questions when an Iraqi television reporter hurled a shoe, shouting in Arabic, this is a gift from the Iraqis. This is a farewell kiss, you dog. Then as he threw the other shoe, this is from the widows, the orphans, and those who were killed in Iraq. He was dragged from the room. NBC News producer Hazi Balkiz was sitting near the reporter. Everybody was so shocked. I believe even the Secret Service was a bit slower to react than you'd, you'd expect because it was so shocking. He had time to pick up his second shoe and throw it. Mr. Bush was never taken home. The White House Press Secretary Dana Perino was hit in the face with a microphone as security wrestled with the reporter. The president wasn't hurt and kept his cool. It may have been a shoe, yeah. yeah. If, you want some, if you want the facts, it's a size 10 shoe that he threw. Iraqi reporters quickly apologized to Mr. Bush, who called it a sign of Iraq's growing freedom. It is one way to gain attention. 
it's it's like going to a political rally and having people yell at you. It's like driving down the street and have people not gesturing with all five fingers. Later, he reflected on the moment. It was amusing. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of weird things during my presidency, and this may rank up there as one of the weirdest. Mr. Bush arrived for his fourth and final surprise visit to Iraq after sneaking out of the White House Saturday night and flying ten and a half hours. In a sign of improved security, there was an outdoor welcoming ceremony 